first chapter, beginning at verse 38, we begin to hear this story. And I'm going to read the scripture for us this morning because I want us to see just how much this idea of invitation is stressed very early in John's gospel. Now, we find Jesus recently after being uh, baptized. We find Jesus uh, out and already doing his ministry very early in the gospel of John because, again, there is no true like birth narrative. Uh, John has his own sort of birth narrative, but we, we really start to see Jesus right at work in his ministry, his earthly ministry in chapter 1. And John the Baptist has already proclaimed Jesus as being the Messiah, as being the one who would uh, come after him, that uh, would baptize with, uh, with fire and the Holy Spirit rather than with water. And people are starting to take notice of John's witness. And so that's where we pick up in John 1, starting with verse 38. There are people who have heard John the Baptist's testimony, and they're starting to inquire about who Jesus is. And so uh, we pick it up there, and it says, When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. And one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated as Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. All right. This might remind you of ACT time, but now I'm going to give you some literary comprehension there. How many invitations in that short section of verses? Close? Five? That's a good guess. Four. Paul's right on it. Nice guess. I was going to do the price is right, higher, lower thing, but, you know, then somebody would say a dollar or something, and we would. Four invitations in that very short paragraph, a very short piece of Scripture. Because first we have Jesus inviting the crowds, those who were hearing John the Baptist's testimony, who are asking about 
well, you know, what, where are you staying? What do you do? What, what's this all about, Jesus? And Jesus gives those three very simple words. Come and see. Come and see for yourself what this is all about. Well, then Andrew did come and see, right? And then he goes and finds his brother, Simon, who will become Peter, the greatest, one of the greatest disciples. And he invites him to come and find out about this Jesus. Well, then we have, you know, Philip, right? We have to get Philip involved in all this. So he gets invited. And then we have Nathaniel who gets invited. You know, Philip gets called by Jesus to come and follow. More like we find in Matthew, Mark, and Luke where Jesus comes along and says, pick up your things and follow me. But that's also an invitation. It's not a command. He's not saying you have to. It's an opportunity, an invitation. And so Philip accepts that invitation, and then he goes off and finds Nathaniel. And Nathaniel also is invited to come and see. Even with all of his questions, even with all of his doubts, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You're kidding me. This can't be possible. But yet, right? And that's a huge part of what it means to be a Christian today is first of all to hear the invitation, but then to invite others into that relationship as well. Now, I've been doing a lot of studying and a lot of reading about church growth this year as I've been going through a church coaching, a ministerial coaching and mentoring process. But one of the things that is truly amazing to me is exactly what it takes to get someone who is, has never had a relationship with the church, who doesn't uh, have a relationship with Christ, to experience that for the first time. And sometimes in this day of technology, in this day where we think that, you know, if I put an invitation out on Facebook or if, I, uh, if we put it on our website or if we have a glossy enough ad in uh, the paper or in a magazine, that that's going to be the marketing that we need to bring people to the church for the first time. But the statistics show that even if you have the best of the best, you know, Madison Avenue sort of marketing, glitzy, glossy, that's only going to account maybe for 20% of the people who come to your door for the first time. Anyone want to guess what the other 80% is? It's this. Word of mouth personal contact, and what's the word we're talking about today? Invitation. More than 80% of people who attend worship at a Christian church for the first time do so because they are invited by someone they know. They call it the elbow principle. Just think about it. If you were... Un, didn't know anyone in a, a particular church, would it be really easy for you to step through those doors for the first time? You don't know exactly what's going to happen. You don't know what goes on there. But if someone you know, someone you trust, says, you know what, come and see. And you know what, come on my elbow, sit next to me on Sunday morning. They know that person they're guaranteed that they're going to be introduced to other people. They're already able to find their way into community. And that's important because that's what we're called to do. We are called to invite people into that relationship with Christ. But then there's the go and tell portion. And the scripture that we have from Matthew 
we jump from the very first part of John's gospel where we're seeing this invitation to what becomes the very last chapter in the book of Matthew where we hear what we know as the Great Commission. And it says this, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We're not supposed to keep this to ourselves. And that ties in with last week when we talked about being the light of Christ for others. Same principle. Once we have experienced the light, once we know that that light of Christ is within us, then we're not supposed to hide it. We're not supposed to keep it shaded. We're supposed to let it shine for the world to see. Because in and through that becomes a great invitation for people to know the one who came so that we might not only have life, but new life. That came to pay the cost and bear the burden for our sins. Who came to tell us in God's eyes we are forgiven and loved to tell us that we are never separated from that love. It is a life-transforming relationship, and we're called to share it with the world in a very special and unique way. But I have heard, and I know from past experience, that this is one of the most difficult things to do for Christians, is for us to share our faith publicly. We often think of it as a very private thing. It's between me and God. But until we get comfortable with sharing our faith, we are always going to fall short of this call to be inviting and invited. So where do we start? Where can we start? Well, first, reflect. Reflect on how you were invited into a relationship with Jesus Christ and the church. Think about that personally. How did you get here? Think about what do you love about the church? What do you want others to know about the church? What do you want to share with others? Think about that so that when you go out, you know what your message is going to be before you get into a situation where you feel you want to share it. Because then you have this wellspring of knowledge, of memory that you can tap into as you begin to talk about those things. But second is to begin to do small invitations. Begin to find those opportunities. Now, if you notice on your connection card today, and of course I think I put mine somewhere else, but that beautiful purple connection card that you have, and one of, the, one of our steps for this week is about inviting people to come for Easter worship. And it's three weeks away, so we have three weeks to work on thinking about who we might want to invite who we think in our lives could really benefit from having that experience. And if you've been to Easter worship here, you know that this whole altar is transformed into this beautiful backdrop of flowers, and J.C. Rock and Gary and our choir come up with just this amazing music, and the day is filled with this vibrant energy, and it's a perfect opportunity to be able to begin to share that invitation for people to come and see. And not only come and see, but to come on your elbow, sit next to you, have someone they know and that they trust. So that's a challenge this week, as are there three people that you can think of that you would invite to Easter worship this year? And then, here's the action step. Make the invitation. 
And next week, we're going to make that even easier for you because we're going to have these wonderful, awesome cards that Lana Euchre is, uh, is preparing for us that are going to go out in the mail to the surrounding communities. But you're going to be able to take some of those with you. And as you make that invitation, you can give them that wonderful uh, postcard. And, and it's just a reminder and a, and a way for you to kind of connect with those people that you want to invite. And finally, where can we start? Well, we can start with taking those reflections, thinking about those ways that, that Christ has touched our lives, and then we can think about how can I have an opportunity to witness. And I think many of us have heard people in our own congregation witness and testify to their faith and the power of Christ. And we can too. When we tell our story, it will connect with the story and the lives of other people. It will help them to see that they are not alone in their faith, in their journey. And it doesn't have to be a public expression from the pulpit, but just in a one-on-one -on -one conversation to say, you know, I believe Christ has changed my life because. And then share your story. That's really what it's all about. But I want to leave us with this as we talk about what it means to be a member of the church today as we talk about what it means to see a church that will continue to grow and thrive into the future. That the church will only grow, and that's numerically and spiritually, when we commit to inviting others to come and see the love of Christ in action, and then to go and follow Jesus with everything that we are and everything that we have. But it starts with the invitation. Amen.